Good morning, guys. So, um, where to start with this? This is a bit of a sorry tale, I'm afraid. Um, as you know, Svetlana and I split up. We split up in May. It's now uh, September, 1st of September. Uh, tomorrow is 31st of August, actually. And um, when we split, the boat was in full working order. So I, I want to make that absolutely clear before we start, because there's been a lot of um, nasty posts by Svetlana uh, flying around that are just untrue, um, accusing me of all sorts of stuff. But we'll 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 come on to that. Um, the important thing is when we bought that boat in November 2021, um, I sat with the previous owner and I wrote out the bill of sale and it was signed and it was witnessed. And I then gave that to Svetlana to register the boat. The boat was registered in Germany and we didn't see any point in registering it in the UK because of Brexit. So we registered it in Sweden. That was, the, that was what Svetlana had decided we were gonna do. And I went along with it. So I gave her the paperwork. Okay. She then registered the boat and I got a certificate from her with my name on a blue piece of paper that said I was the owner. And I didn't think anything more of it. She had one too. And that was it. Now, when you register a boat in Sweden you uh, and you're not a Swedish national, you register it through the Swedish cruising club and what I didn't realize is this certificate was actually a certificate of the boat being registered on the cruising club register not the Swedish um, ship register there is a separate document a separate document which is yellow so for three years I have assumed quite wrongly that the boat was registered in joint names uh, what I didn't know is that she had altered the bill of sale back in November 2021 to register the boat in her sole name. How did I find out? Well, um, she moved the boat to Meganesi, Little Vathi. Um, as I think I've already talked about, um, she then rang me to say there was a problem with the starter on the boat and I went over there and the end caps on the heat exchanger had been leaking. Now, back in January, I did a couple of episodes where I took the heat exchanger off and tried cleaning it all up and uh, doing a repair on the end caps to stop them leaking because they have been leaking for a long time. There's a lot of corrosion on the heat exchanger case. It's, it's been, it, it sort of precedes us owning the boat. And um, I used like metal epoxy, you know, metal putty to, um, to do the repair. And I said at the time, this is temporary and we have to be very careful with the engine and we've got to treat it with kid gloves. Um, and I did, you know, I never, never went anywhere near th full throttle or even, cruising speed on it and I was you know checked it and cleaned it and what have you so anyway um the starter motor had seized the um the salt water had been coming out both ends of the end caps and it had seized the starter motor and it was all over the alternator as well but the starter motor was seized so I took the starter motor off and I took the heat exchanger case off the heat exchanger um to get them repaired the starter motor irreparable so I bought a new starter motor. The heat exchanger needed welding, aluminium welding and um, I didn't know where to go but I asked around and eventually I found someone that would do it but they wanted the heat exchanger case cleaning up first, they wanted the core taking out of it and everything clean before they would touch it. So I spent quite a bit of time sorting that and then dropping it off to them they wanted um, 300 euros per end to repair it, so 600 euros in total, which I didn't think was too bad, seeing as the replacement part is 2,000 euros. So I contacted Svetlana and said, look, it's going to be ready you know, uh, a week on Tuesday and it's 600 euros. But unfortunately, because of all the work I've been doing on Driscoss, I haven't got it. So we're going to have to work out how we're going to pay for it. 
and uh, she said, well, I'll pay for it. So we'd arranged to go over and pick this thing up. The week before we're due to go over, I then get a text message from her saying, I've found an engineer who can fit the starter motor. I want you to give me the starter motor now. And it's like, uh, nope, because it's my boat. and I know where everything is. There's no point in fitting the starter motor without the heat exchanger. I'm gonna do it all in one go. And I don't want anybody else fiddling with it because I don't want, want to know where anything, where anything is. And um, so I'm coming over tomorrow to I've got a part for the outboard and I'll, I will talk about it then. So, following day I set off, I get to within 20 minutes of Little Vathy and I get a phone call from the port police. Svetlana has got on the ferry from Meganese, she's gone over to the port police and she has filed a complaint against me. Uh, I have abandoned her, I've left her with a broken boat and no way of getting water and she has a nine-year-old child on board and I'm putting them in danger. Now, I first time I've ever heard of a nine-year-old child, for a start off. Um, it turns out her 14-year-old niece has come over for, for the school holidays and Svelana has allowed this, knowing full well that the boat is broken and that you know, it's difficult to get water, not impossible. There is actually a hose, a, a, a tap nearby, so it's, you know, it just needs an, ex, an extension on the hose. But anyway, um, so I said to them, well, I'm actually 15 minutes away, 20 minutes away from the from the boat. I'm, I, would, I'm, I was planning on going there anyway. Well, why don't you give her the starter motor? I said, but because I don't want anybody else fiddling with my boat. And it's like, oh, it's your boat. Right, okay, send me the paperwork. So I get to Meganisi and I email them the paperwork. Now what I've got is a photocopy of the bill of sale. Um, and it's not complete. The bill of sale is uh, using the template for the small British Small Ships Register and it's a four page document and I've got page one which is with my name on it, and page three with the signature of the owner on it. I haven't got page two. Page two has Svetlana's name on it as the co-owner. So I send it all across. It's never really been a problem before, um, but now it is because apparently my bill of sale is different. So um, overnight, I get another really nasty text message from Svetlana saying, you've really done it this time. You've falsified the paperwork. They're really gunning for you. You need to get the starter motor to them and um, you're in deep trouble. So I go into the Port Police Office with the starter motor and all the paperwork and it is different people and they don't know what I'm talking about. So I explain to them what's happened. And they say to me, well, it's clearly part of your boat and you're entitled to um, make decisions about who repairs it so I would go away and um, don't repair it that's what they actually said to me don't repair it so I left now in the text message that she sent me she'd also threatened me with the police she has a couple of recordings of me um, very drunk a couple of years ago effing and blinding um, after she had um, brought a man back to the boat and tried to seduce him. And I kicked her off. So we were going through a really rough patch. And I, 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 you know, I was too much to drink and I was telling her to um, F off, basically. And she'd recorded it. So I then went to the police station and I took the recordings with me and I said, this is the situation. If I've done something wrong, please tell me. Um, what are my options and if you need to arrest me I'm here so they they turned around and said well technically this is an offense but it's a very minor one so um, if she comes in and complains then maybe we'll have to do something about it but right now I wouldn't worry about it so I didn't and I left and I went sailing and uh, I was uh, near um, Civita anchored in a little bay the following morning got a phone call from the port police where are you you need to be here in 10 minutes and it's like well i can't be there in 10 minutes i'm at the bottom end of the island but i'll sail up 
So I sailed up, pulled into Vlijo Bay, um, realised that that my my paperwork for Driscos I needed to get printed out. I got it, but I hadn't got it in a printed form, and they wanted all my paperwork as well. So I went to the yacht club, got it printed, and then realised I'd forgotten the starter motor. Went back, got the starter motor, and as I got onto the quayside, the um, port police coast guard rib is there, and he's not happy. He's seriously not happy with me. And it's like, well, here's my car key, here's the paperwork, here's the starter motor. There's my car. I was actually on my way to you. So he said, right, give me the paperwork. So I gave him the paperwork. Right, I will see you at the port police office in ten minutes. So I drove down to the port police, got in there, different people, but they knew what was going on and they weren't friendly. And they showed me the documents that Sidlana had sent through, and this is the crux of it, because her bill of sale was completely different to mine. Uh, again, as I say, British Small Ships Register, Bill of Sale, standard template, her page one had her name on it as the sole owner. Missing page two, her page three, had this witness and the signature on it, but it was all in biro, and um, it wasn't until I actually they put them side by side, and I pointed out to them that my page one and page two were in the same handwriting, and the signature of the previous owner matched on both pages. Her page one and page two, page one was in clearly different handwriting, and the signature was a. Well, it was, it was a good attempt, but it wasn't actually an a exact copy. It wasn't an exact signature. And at that point, they sort of backed off. And um, it became a little bit more civil. And it was more a case of, right, OK, well, you need to sort this out amicably between you. Because if we've got to start filling the paperwork out, it's a criminal offence to um, falsify a document. And it's like, well, I don't want to get her into, you know, I don't want to get her into that sort of trouble. Um, I just want, basically, to clarify the situation and, and, and for everyone to agree that I'm a co-owner of the boat. I paid half, you know, um, no more, no less. So they said, sort it out yourself. So I, the, Svetlana was refusing to meet me to go and get this heat exchanger and collect it. And the end, I said, well, I know where the guy is. I don't know his telephone number. I don't know his name. I just know how to find him. So it's the only choice you've got. If you want this heat exchanger, you're going to have to, I'm going to have to give you a lift there. Um, and so she reluctantly um, agreed. And we went into Lefkus and we went to this guy. And he hadn't actually finished um, repairing it because he wanted us to take the core away and descale the core again because it was... Um, it was still um, it, it was still full of, of um, scale. So um, she took the core away and um, she would um, have me drop her in Lefkus Town. And we, I sat her there and I said, look, here's a piece of paper. On it, it said, you know, I've made a mistake when I registered the boat. I didn't realize and in actual fact, I acknowledged that me, I'm the co-owner and uh, can you rectify the paperwork? So it was it was trying to um, correct the issue without getting her into trouble and she refused to sign it. Uh, so that's where we left it. Um, I said, I don't want anything to do with this. You know, at the end of the day, you know, if you're gonna have to fix it yourself. If you've got an engineer to fix it, well, you got to fix it yourself. Uh, and I walked away and um, about a week later, I found out that she'd been approaching some brokers to get the boat sold. Uh, so I texted her again and said, look, I will fix the boat. You know, you've given the broker a list of things that are wrong with it. I will, they're actually not that big. Uh, I will fix the boat. I will get it ready for sale. But the condition is that we sell it through the broker that, you know, you've approached. So he's a friend of mine as well. So he knows the situation. So no, I will get my half. And uh, that means the boat has to move back to Vlijo Bay, where it's accessible for sale. And she uh, responded with uh, the fact that her niece was going back to the UK in a few days and we could talk about it then. So I thought, okay, fair enough, let me know. And uh, I was due to come up to Corfu. Um, I was coming up here to meet a friend, spend a week up here, 
just to to chill out and i thought it would be a really good test of, of uh, driscos as well um so uh, yeah set off up here got uh probably a third of the way here and then got a phone call the boat's moving so that alarm is leaving meganisi and it's like okay well where's she going who's on board what's going on so i didn't know um so i put a post out on friends of left gas on facebook and somebody actually uh, contacted me and said she was going through the left gas canal at 11 o'clock this morning heading north so that's as far as i got and i was thinking about it thinking about her niece and getting her back to manchester and the fact that easyjet has stopped flights from preveza uh, to manchester so you can only fly Jet 2, and Jet 2 is astronomically expensive because they've got the monopoly. And I thought, she's bringing her to Corfu. Yeah, there are flights from Corfu, it's a lot cheaper. She's bringing her to Corfu. So, um, yeah, anyway, I, I won't tell you how I found her because um, there's still a court case pending, and um, how I found her is part of that. But anyway, I found her. She was in. Mandraki Marina, uh, which is at the base of the the fortress, the old fort in Corfu. It's expensive. It's it's not a cheap marina, and she'd obviously put it in there to hide it from me, because um, she knows I wouldn't entertain going into a marina when I could go to anchor. And she prefers going to into marinas. So anyway, um, I had tracked down the previous owner's widow and got in contact with her and she bless her had got a copy of the original bill of sale when we did the, the bill of sale we did two one for them one for me and they were both signed and uh she had my uh, passport and the previous owner's id card on the same piece of paper proving that it would all would all link and she sent me photographs of it which I then took to the lawyer. And then he said, right, down to the port police. When you get there, give me a call. And I did. And I spent four hours in the port police office. Um, at which point they then went and got Svetlana and brought her into the port police office as well. Um, and then it started to get interesting because um, it turns out that the, um, the Swedish international registration that she had um, falsified to get in her name had expired in March so she had no registration papers she had um, attempted to put her name on the boat insurance and uh, so she had an insurance certificate with her name and my name on it but because it's my insurance policy the insurance company had emailed me and I'd emailed straight back and said, this is not correct. This is my policy. I don't want her name on the policy. Uh, and while we were together, it didn't matter because we were always sailing together uh, and I paid for it. So I didn't see any reason why her name should be on it um, in any case. So um, so they, they basically rescinded it. So she has a document which is, is incorrect and, and they checked up with the insurance company and confirmed that she's not actually insured. Then they started to investigate um, the Greek cruising tax. You have to pay every month to basically have your boat in Greek waters and be able to cruise around. It's, it's not a lot of money. It's about, for Captain Svetlana, it was 107 euros a month. And again, I always paid it. I always paid everything, every red cent that, that we had, the food we were eating, the alcohol she was getting drunk on and then taking the mickey out of me on. Uh, I paid for everything. So um, she hadn't paid it. So they have got her for falsifying documents, for uh, no insurance and for non-payment of cruising tax. As a result of that, they have basically impounded the boat she's not allowed to move if she moves she gets arrested and fined and i have an injunction um, proceeding uh, at the moment so that's where we are guys um three years ago svetlana falsified the paperwork on the boat and we were living together for three years and she knew this 
and for the last three years she has been systematically trying to get me to leave. Um, I, 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 you know, I see it very, very clearly now. Um, she's been systematically nasty and uh, progressively nasty to try and get me to leave. In fact, the reason I left is because it was getting violent and um, I knew that if, if it continued, I would end up being accused of violence and I didn't want that because she was the one that was getting violent, not me, which is the reason why I walked. So now you know. Um, all the posts that she's put on about me being abusive, she's got these two recordings from when I was very drunk two years ago. That's it. Um, she has been into my phone and she's got copies of text messages and copies of... Um, you know, WhatsApp messages and what have you. Again, totally out of context, they were from times when we were not together, when I caught her with this other man and I chucked her off the boat and said, don't come back. In fact, the only reason she was allowed back is because the port police in Mesolonghi brought her back and refused to take her away again. Uh, so we had to come to some form of agreement. So all out of context, yes, it happened. Yes, I was talking to other women, but not while we were together. And um, that's all I'm going to say on that subject. I mean, I don't want to air my dirty washing in public, but I've just spent 15 minutes doing exactly that. Um, when, when we split, I did put a little YouTube clip out saying we split. I didn't say any reasons why, and just saying that I didn't know what I was going to do. And she asked me to remove it, and I removed it out of respect for her. Um, now, I have no respect. I have zero respect. Anyone that can actually do this premeditated is, um, you know, it's not right. And um, the other thing that you guys need to know is that I actually contacted her ex-husband, her previous husband, who turned out to be husband number four, and she'd done pretty much the same thing to him. She cleaned him out when she, when he was at work. Uh, she'd hired a moving van and literally came back to an empty house. Even the wheels on his car are gone. Um, so this is the woman that I've been living with for the last five years. And what does that say about me? Really? Anyway, it's going to be a really crazy video. All you've got is me talking. But there you go. Hopefully, it now all makes sense. And... Uh, Thanks for sticking with me. I know that there's been some nasty, crazy nasty posts flying around and uh, people are still subscribed, so I, I'm very grateful. Um, but now, I uh, don't know what's going to happen with, with um, Captain Svetlana with the boat. Uh, I'm hoping that we'll be able to sort something out. Um, we'll see. Um, as I say, I still own 50% of it. And my main reason for doing all this is because Corfu is the jumping off point. From here you could go to Albania, you know, Italy, Montenegro, and as soon as the boat leaves Greek waters I've lost it. So, yeah. Um, I feel a bit sick really, but I've had to, but anyway.